Hi guys, Matt Easton here. So, uh, what I have here is a Cold Steel um, US Marines Sabre uh, to review. It actually belongs to well, one of my students in my club in London. Um, and uh, he asked me to review it. Uh, and it's good because uh, I don't usually, I haven't actually had my hands on many of the Cold Steel Sabres, but a lot of you have asked me about them. I think, generally speaking, um, based on looking at the stats, I have handled their, uh, the Cold Steel 1796 Light Cavalry Saber a few times. Um, and generally speaking, they tend to be a tiny bit overweight and they tend to have too little distal taper. That is, they tend to be not thick enough at the base of the blade and not thin enough in the foible of the blade. Um, and so as a result they tend to feel a little bit clunky compared to the originals. The originals tend to move better. Um, but anyway, let's have a look at this model. I won't talk too generally about their sabers because obviously I haven't handled them yet. Incidentally, I have invited uh, Cold Steel to uh, send me samples to, to review, uh, but so far they haven't responded to me at all. Uh, so there we go, we'll see, maybe they'll see this video and they'll send me some others to review. So. Um, First of all, the uh, US Marines, this is the current issue, uh, US Marines um, Officers Sabre, and um, it's model on the 1855 pattern um, French Infantry Officers Sabre, in fact. Um, so, first of all, I'll just put the sword down for a second and just talk about the scabbard. So, the scabbard is, compared to the originals, I would say it's more substantial. It's, it's heavier, so it's a leather and brass mounted scabbard. The brass fittings are thicker than on the originals in general, which is no bad thing because it means that they're stronger. Uh, the leather is quite nice, although it has quite a modern look about it. It looks like kind of the typical uh, modern patent leather that you find on things like handbags, which it doesn't tend to be what the 19th century examples look like. They tend to be a little bit more, uh, they just look like better quality leather basically. Um, the seam at the back stands up quite proud, which again is tends to not be like originals. Originals tend to be um, uh, folded over and matched together like that so that they would sit flush because by standing proud, if you're wearing a sabre, that's going to rub a lot against the uniform. It's going to potentially be uncomfortable as well. Um, and it has a wood liner in it, I would imagine. I can't actually quite see from here. I think it's a wood liner. So I think essentially it's a wooden scabbard with a leather covering and brass fittings, which is absolutely fine. Although I would say that the wood slats are probably a bit thicker than the originals are. But again, the originals of these scabbards, the 19th century ones, tend to be built for uh, finesse and lightness. Um, and this is probably built more for durability. But it's not heavy, it's just heavier than the originals tend to be. Uh, so it's probably more durable than, than the originals. Now onto the sword. Uh, generally speaking, in terms of handling, well I have to confess I've never handled a real uh, US Marines sabre. Uh, I can only compare it to the 19th century French swords which are very similar to this that I do know and have owned. Um, first up, it's all solid. It seems to be seems to be fairly solid. There's a very tiny bit of movement in the hilt uh, when you move it quickly, which is not good for a new sword. It's forgivable with antique swords, but not really good with a new sword. Uh, so uh, that's not good. That should be a slightly tighter assembly, I would say. The fitting of the blade into the scabbard, if we just go there, the hull is not fantastically fitted to the blade. Um, what a lot of antiques do to disguise that is they have a leather washer around the base of the blade. It can either be sandwiched between the shoulders of the tang and the uh, guard itself, or it can just simply be slid on after the whole assembly is put together. But either way, it just makes that look tidier. And I'm kind of surprised that Cold Steel haven't put a leather washer at the base of the blade. Okay, onto the blade itself. Um, distal taper is actually pretty good, I have to say. Um, it starts out at about five millimeters thick, uh, and it does narrow down at the correct portion of the blade, that is usually where the fuller ends. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got pretty good distal taper, and it's a fairly light blade. As far as the cold steel swords go, this will probably be one of their lighter ones. And it feels somewhat similar to a British officer's, uh, infantry officer's sabre of the 19th century. In terms of the sharpening, uh, I understand that in the UK, for some reason, these are initially supplied blunt, uh, which seems a strange decision for uh, cold steel, because everyone knows cold steel is basically backyard cutting swords. Um, and this example has been sharpened um, upon purchase, presumably special request, 
but it's only been sharpened from this point of the blade upwards. Now I can see a logic in that, in that theoretically speaking you're supposed to be cutting with this portion of the blade and then slicing with this portion of the blade. However, um, I have never seen a, certainly I've never seen a British or a French uh, 19th century sabre that was only sharpened from there up unless it was a specifically thrusting sword, okay? And this is a curved sabre, okay? It's, it should be for cutting. Um, so I would like to see the blade sharpened from at least about there uh, on the, uh, all the way along. I suspect the reason that they've done it like that is because as you will see, just being careful because it is sharp, it has uh, etching on the blade, US Marines, United States Marines. Um, and I think that they've just sharpened it from that point up because that's the point at which the etching stops, okay? So they haven't wanted to mess with the etching. Onto the actual etching itself, it's pretty good. Um, it's what we describe as frost etching, that is, the acid hasn't been allowed to burn very deeply into the blade and they've gone for a kind of black and white pattern, which is fine. Uh, that's quite historically correct. Um, it's not my favourite kind of etching, I prefer etching which has some profile to it which actually bites into the blade a bit and this is the most durable type of etching as well because it's actually sculpted almost into the blade with the acid burning into the steel. Uh, this type of frost etching is notorious for essentially rubbing off in use uh, and if you need to polish the sword it's very difficult to polish it without destroying that frost etching. Um, but the blade appears to have good flex um, it, it, as I said, it's got good distal taper, the weight is fine. Okay? In terms of the hilt, um, the brass parts of the hilt I think are perfectly fine. They look very, very shiny, but that's how they were when they were new, even in the 19th century. I'm used to antique examples which are not normally that bright. Um, but that's absolutely fine, it's a modern parade sword essentially. Um, and in terms of the grip, again we come to this patent leather that I'm not a huge fan of. It doesn't really look like the leather on old swords um, and these grips on the originals or the older swords tend to be either uh, either leather but of a better quality than this or shark skin or uh, sometimes um, ebony or horn okay if they were black and if they were white then uh, ivory or uh, sometimes bone okay uh, so the leather doesn't look fantastic quality to me it looks a bit cheapy and I, I expect that would get scuffed with use and the wire, you just go there, the wire is okay but it doesn't have enough twists per inch. Okay, If you look at antique examples, the wire, each of those strands you can see there is made of two substrands which are twisted around each other. And for some reason modern replicas always seem to not twist it enough compared to the originals. The originals always have many more twists per inch. Um, so the wire is not great and, and the grip covering is not great. Um, but, you know, it's kind of okay. In terms of the size and shape of the sword, well I'm not going to really comment on that because it's just, it's a, it's a model of sword, it's a pattern of sword, it's the US Marines uh, officer's sword, and that's the size it is. I, yeah, it's okay, I'd be happy fencing with that, it's not dissimilar to a British officer's uh, infantry sabre in terms of weight, balance and everything else. Um, oh, one final thing I noticed actually was that the knuckle bow I don't know if you can quite see there, but the knuckle bow isn't really in line with the blade. Now, some antique examples are like that, however, I would personally prefer to see, if you can see, if I put the blade straight onto the camera, the knuckle bow is sticking off at an angle. I think the knuckle bow should be made to be in line with the uh, blade. As much as for aesthetic reasons as anything, protectively it actually doesn't matter too much because it's protecting the outside of the hand slightly more than the inside, which is kind of uh, relative to the directions you tend to get hit with in fencing. But, uh, but aesthetically I'd rather see the knuckle bow and balance in balance terms as well, I'd rather see the knuckle bow in line with the edge. So there we go, a quick uh, overview of one of the cold steel sabres. Uh, I think it's pretty good, it's okay for, for cutting, it'd be okay. Uh, personally I prefer an antique example um, or something of a different design, I'm not a particular fan of, of, this, of this design. Um, but uh, the one thing I would say, at least in the UK, is that the price of these is very high for what they are. And I think that for the price that you're paying in the UK for cold steel sabres, you should really be expecting a better product. And for that kind of price you could probably get something custom made as well. Um, I do understand that in the US the cold steel 
uh, stuff is cheaper than it is for us because it gets a lot of uh, tax and, and um, other added costs when we purchase it in the UK. Uh, so there we go, the Cold Steel uh, US Marines Sabre. Cheers.